now that we're down to two series a day, I would prefer if, you know, it didn't just end in a two two O's. Yes. I'd love a game three. Hopefully. Especially in this series after that game one. Yeah, because it, it felt close. It, it got back to even. Like, there was certainly the opportunity for Royal Never Give Up to win that game, but uh, it just, the itemization, I think, was better overall from wow. E-Home. And they go first pick Elder Titan. Now, who uh, was the series wow. we saw this between? Wasn't it E-Home and was it IG in the groups? Was it Ast? I can't remember. It was E-Home against somebody. And that we saw first pick ET in both games from either team. Uh, I think this uh, series is really cool. I don't see it for eHome, but I'll check RNG's matchups. If they played Elder Titan. And like, if they open with ET, like, what do you return with? I think you just have to... Oh, wow, they go Venge. Wow. And that I mean, we, could be Chalice Venge. That's a pretty open pick for him. It is, but we've also seen X Nova play it as well. Like, like you say, it, is, it does have flex value. So yeah, yeah, I, I like this. This is really good. Nice to see different openings as well to normal because we we're used to like these mags, the dooms, the phoenixes, um, and we don't have that that drow Sven ban this time, which is interesting. That might be something to do. Has the pick order reversed? So last game it was first pick doom mm. for RNG, right? I think. So, just to double back, sorry. Um, the series you were thinking of was the LGD RNG series. Right, okay. And they first picked Elder Titan for LGD and went tiny. And that's what RNG have just done. And then the last time RNG had it, they went Elder Titan Venge, which might have been why Ehome yes. picked the Venge right there. So this is why they first faced Ban Drow last time. Mm -hmm. Because this is something that Ehome loved to open with. I I don't mind it. I think it's really strong. But RNG definitely going to have ways to deal with this. Like They have uh, good ways of getting to the back line at the moment. With the ET Stomp. With the Avatos combo on the Blink on the Tiny. But Ehome, this is like... This is their game plan. They've already shown. They want to play off this Drow. They have the Venge as well. It's a nice combo to open with. Mm-hmm. Um, and now they get to protect their draw with three bands. So, you know, you're thinking of the Spectres, yeah. the AMs potentially as well. Mm. We'll have to see what they go for. Ban the Marana. Uh, ban the Marana, no Phoenix in the game. What are they thinking with that Marana ban? Yeah, that's interesting. Or what would they it? like to ban? Hmm. Or pick? I th it's something that I've seen teams do before when they play the Venge position three. So they mm -hmm. have like the Venge stun into the Marana Arrow in the laning stage is really strong. And it gives them that way of playing the aggressive early tempo with the Moonlight Shadow as well. So I don't mind the ban. It's a little mm -hmm. bit different. But like, what do you ban when they have Venge Drow? Like Mars, maybe, I guess. Uh, like, there's so uh, yeah, many things they available. can do still. I wouldn't be surprised if RNG good took uh, Mars. But I think three melee heroes... Yeah. To start is a little rough against this Drow. I think Mars in lane is really difficult to play against Drow as well. Mm -hmm. I could see like a Nature's Prophet or something potentially coming out from RNG and having like a Nature's Prophet tiny lane. Mm -hmm. Drow doesn't really deal with the um, trees very well. Mm. Yeah, I think PL Mars spec. being in the pool is a big deal. I think Void Spirit, we haven't seen a huge amount of that hero today. I still think it's really good here. He's right, been untouched for three games. Mm-hmm. Which is a bit of a surprise because he felt very prominent in the in the scene for like the first couple days of this. So they think it's definitely going to be Chalice. Well, not definitely, but most likely going to be Chalice Venge, which is interesting. Yeah, Ben in the Clockwork as well as the Undying. More so, Marana would have been a James hero. Could they just for once bring back the James Shadow Shaman? <laughs> I'd like to like, see it. I don't know why Shadow Shaman just gets ignored. He's got lockdown, he's got push potential, everything a team would love, and a hex. Come on, guys. Like, what's going on here? It, hmm, it is very susceptible to just blowing up, though, to a lot of heroes that are popular at the moment. Like the so were a lot of heroes. We, we, were seeing, we were seeing heroes getting picked off by Tiny uh, okay. drastically. 
And this is now really Tusk comes in. Ooh, yeah, that could be. Is... That could be. Uh, Chalice Tusk. It could be. I think it's more likely to be Tusk five, Drow one, with Venge mm -hmm. three, and it could be Venge three, Tusk four. So, but look at their physical damage output now, on the E home side. Like, the, look at their Roche potential as well. Yeah. They have the Wave of Terror. They've got the tag team. This Drow's really strong as well around the pit. They're just playing a much faster tempo with these three picks compared to RNG. Although RNG really haven't given away their tempo yet, but wow. now they picked that Mars, and we've already talked about it in this draft, that if they were to have picked Mars, and now they have, it seems kind of rough against this lineup, and we'll see how Mars ends up leaning against this draft, unless now, for some reason they throw the Mars mid. I don't often call for this hero. I think it's a really good timber game. Yeah. And because, I mean that could you could throw the Venge five. Yeah. Because I think the Tim it could even be Timber mid like potentially as well. Like you could mess the lanes up so you aggro try with those heroes and put the Timber solo safe. Mm -hmm. I think it's a there's yeah, there's not many but the thing is like Timber's one of those heroes I think you have to be able to practice around and like know how to play around as a team. So if it's mm -hmm. not been picked in a while, they're probably thinking like, oh you know, or I don't even know if they'll be thinking about it. Uh I could check really quick. When was the last time Chalice played the Timber? I also think it could be a decent Night Stalker game for them, on Home. But again, I, I think they want to put the Chalice as the three and then pick like some different four. Maybe like an Earth Spirit or something could be pretty good to get on the ET. Mm -hmm. Wow, he has not played Timber in a while. Yeah, I think that hero is really difficult to make work at the moment. But it's really, I was only going to say it's, it's really good because ET Natural Order doesn't do anything against it because all the reactive armor is extra, right? Haven't we seen um, seen Timber recently take over a game? That was us, right? I can't remember. He, he played it once um, against RNG, actually. And they lost. 6, 7, and 4 had okay. Hood, Bloodstone... As well as the Shivas. And it was Timber, Doom, Disruptor, Phoenix, Weaver against Sven, Tiny, Omni, Rubik, Wisp. V Cup, it's a really good Batrider game. <clears throat> yeah. Well, is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. They might play it like position four. But it's a good Batrider game in general. Obviously, against the Venge, it's not as easy to get the lasso off. But like the laning stage looks, is really good for the Batrider. It's so the hero that gets onto the backline to find the Drow as well, even without the lasso. Because remember, Drow, when you get in range of her to cancel that marksmanship and things, like her damage output goes down you know, pretty um, heavily. Mm-hmm. They need some like big damage dealer though on RNG to round off their lineup, and I don't know what that's gonna be. Hmm. Maybe they could go like Lycan. That sounds fun. When was the last time we saw Lycan? Holy hell! Wow. Yeah, well, Silas not in this tournament, so. Oh God! Is Trail of the Burning Doom Lycan? Come on, please. I love glitched items. <laughs> What else could they go for? It's not fair that not many players have them. Maybe like a CK or something could be fun for RNG as well. Because uh, both these heroes allow them to get onto the draw as well. Mm, what am I thinking here for E-Home? You could Setsu... just... Ooh, go for it. No, I should say, Setsu plays the Mars, doesn't he, as well, if needed. Yeah, I guess. I was thinking for E-Home, you could just throw the Snapfire mid... Venge 3, Tusk 4, Oracle 5. Could do, but I think you want some damage dealer still. Mm -hmm. I could see them picking Void Spirit still on RNG potentially. Oh no, E-Home, sorry, I mean. Ban the Zeus, ban the PA... I would have got the Storm ban right on uh, Royal Never Give Up if they were the last ban. 
Where do we think this snap fire is going, by the way? Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be mid, but it definitely could be. I could see it being position four for James. I could even see it being position three, honestly. Wow. Three snap, okay. five venge, four tusk. So now the Stormbound, this game makes more sense. You didn't call it, by the way. I'm a bit disappointed. Well, I did say if, I, if it was the last ban, I would have picked it. But it wasn't the last ban. And I would have been on it. But here they for need, Eom, uh, hmm. They need some more catch for this arc. Does Lashrak work in this game at all? No. No? I mean, the, the, the pushing we potential is nice with the Edict, but... Okay. Yeah, there's, okay, there's more catch, though. So it will like, be the mid snapfire. Yeah, I like the RNG lineup though. Yeah, this arc warden should be really strong this game. Depends because if he home can play like really quick tempo here, mm -hmm. and um, like take towers really early on before God King's ready to fight, then it's fine. But again, like imagine going high ground this game against Mars Batrider arc warden. Oish. That sounds really hard. Yeah, and th like they can delay the game really well on RNG because they have like the stomp from the ET and everything as well. I think I prefer RNG's lineup just because I think eventually this Arc Warden could almost look like one versus five. I mean, and could I, they out-tempo RNG? I mean, they can, potentially, but I think that's the only way they win. It, like, if mm -hmm. this game goes like to 30 minutes plus, I really struggle to see how they like go ever go high ground. Unless they win like a big fight before. Yeah, and catch them with like no buyback. Yeah. Um, so it's Legion Tusk Lane, Trowvenge. Mm -hmm. Legion Tusk should be interesting though against um, Arc Warden ET because obviously you can purge off the flux with the uh, press the attack, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. But then playing these two melee heroes against an ET in lane, I feel like it's really good protection for God King on the Arc Warden. So again, is this really a good back game if you've got Swap and Tusk for the save? Say that again, sorry. So like, you're, you're talking about how it's a good back game, but like, don't they have Swap and, and Snowball? Yeah, it's not about the lasso though. Mm -hmm. Like, this, this here is really good at just causing chaos in fights and things and getting on top of people. I'd, li I'd like to see him do like a bit of a weird build this game potentially as well and go like BKB Solar Crest or something. I think he needs the armor protection. Like if you look at Radiant uh, Dyer's lineup, sorry, Ehome, it's so much physical damage and not a huge amount of magical burst. So like I think building armor in particular is really important this game for Radiant. Right. On, the on their two battle. cores at least. And so I'd like to see somebody on the Radiant side at least go Medallion. I don't know who it would be, but... Hopefully the Battle Rider. Hmm. As well for Eho, I think it's all making sure for them they get the first Roche and they play off this age as well. Because if they can get like all the outer towers with the first Roche, like second Roche, whatever, they'll feel the good about this game. Begins. Yeah. Oh, Immortal Treasure 2. Easy. It's Immortal Treasure 1 with an exclamation point. Oh my god, I've been jabated. Just saying. But you know, the only item I haven't got from the treasures is the Ursa set, and it's the only one I really wanted. Uh, I have two. Oh my god, yes. I do have two. Give me the bear. <laughs> I think I could gift it over. Let's, um, okay, so I have to choose who's going to win this game, and if I get it right, I'll swap for you, with you for something else. <laughs> I mean, uh, if I, you, and if you get it wrong, I just give it to you? Yeah, if you, if you get it wrong, you still have to give me the Ursa set. Okay, I see how it is. You know, my luck in the chest is usually pretty good. I got an extra 250 levels from Treasure 3. <laughs> Easy, Aegis. Uh, Felix has missed the pull in the top lane, by the way. He's a little bit late to that one. You said Felix. I, I thought you said Phoenix, and I was like looking for a Phoenix in this game. 
I think it's really important for you home up in this top lane that they um Oh stun. That they don't give away like too much I don't they like they need to pressure the lane early on because when this bat rider gets to level three, they're just gonna start running at them with the tiny and the bat rider. And like you need to have that capability of like defending yourself or like at least gaining a level advantage. Mm -hmm. But at the moment they're gonna hit level two on the RNG side first. And that's gonna be a problem. Dyer's courier has been killed. James also losing his courier. Yeah, I think Venge is in trouble. If they kill a creep here and Tiny gets level two, yeah. Yeah, X Nova already running away from that lane, not wanting to get caught in that. I honestly, I thought the Bat Rider, Bat Rider would run up the Venge. X Nova does have the vision here. So overall could feel relatively safe. Sweep bottom, but Chalice who all of a sudden taking some damage there from God King with the Spark Wraith. Wave of Terror stun for X Nova if SRF gets a little too confident. Yeah, God King should have a really good time down here though on the arc. I feel like it's uh, like we said, it's a good lane for him because the ET is just protecting him the whole time. It's really difficult really for him to close to the gap. Avalanche, magic missile, now the toss back. As you see, goes for the TP. James it's comes over one. the damage and seven stacks. Oh my god. It was Kuss. <laughs> they had the Tusk come over, but that TP that took so long. <laughs> the, the TP from the Tusk delayed the Drow TP, so she had to. now she has no TP to get back to lane. Oh. oh my god, what a disaster for SCCC. Wow, that's horrifying. I mean, James had the right idea. I guess maybe he thought SCC wasn't going to TP back to the tier 1 tower? That gold is claimed. No, I mean, James just thought he was going to try and get there to help before the Drow was under any real threat. But yeah... Rough. That's, that's just that's just one of those things that happens, right? Like I don't think there's anybody to blame in particular. Yeah, I don't Drow, think so. Drow finally gets back to lane, but now Batrider's about to hit level four. Like the lane's coming in towards the Batrider. I, I guess it's pretty even. Four minute rune. XM. A little towards bottom, but. It ends up being somewhere Ooh, else. Double cookie. Fire snap cookie and hits onto the other Titan as well as the Mars. They hit the sweep on it too though. Scatter blast super in some trouble. Chase is on. The shards are there. Nicely placed and XM gets the kill. <laughs> that does mean that Setsu gets the haste rune up on the top side of the map though. So in a way, not even that bad for Setsu. <laughs> no, not at all. Radiant's Drow's courier has been killed. Pushed under the tower. Ooh. Oh, Gokin right, got his items courier off the goes crew. down. Meanwhile, though, top lane. You know, look, they've got SRF in some trouble. Avalanche comes in on a three with the sleep. Uh oh. This might be really bad for E Home. They've got the toss. They'll get the kill on X Nova. They look over at SCCC. They'll chase him. Great shards. James keeping his drow alive. And they might even turn this, but James might want to be careful about how far forward he's stepping. Yeah, that initial avalanche from Felix was really good as well, because it completely like null avoids the tag team damage that can come through. Mm -hmm. Now this bat rider's gonna bottle up the bounty rune. <laughs> he has a really early one here. Sweet. And don't you dare. 1k lead for RNG. Things are going pretty well. This this laning situation is so good though because they have to trip protect S Triple C, but it also means that he's not getting any XP on the Drow Ranger, like at all, because both the yeah. supports are up there. And then that means that the Arc Warner gets the 1v1 in the bot lane, but kisses are coming through. Yeah, God King in trouble. He'll end up dead. XM gets the kill. That's a big one to get. Setsu comes over with the arena. James is trying to make sure he doesn't get hit by this spear, but. Setsu will land it. Still though, James not dead just yet. Trying to survive. Eats a lot of time on that. Yeah, 
Yeah, but they, they're gonna, not going to be able to protect this top tier one tower now. And there's a catapult wave, so there's going to be a lot of damage that gets put onto this. They try to glyph to keep it alive. Or at least keep it from taking that much damage. We've got the avalanche coming out onto this Venge. X Nova in some trouble. Three heroes here throws a magic missile onto the Bat Rider. And Felix will take that kill. Okay, I mean, X never dies, but it keeps the tower alive. So, in a way, Radiance bottom yeah, tower pretty good, attack. honestly, for, uh, for E-Home. Hey, X never gets out of his life, but it's attack. like, okay, that's fine. God King also used TP to try and get away from that gank before, like the Drow did, so... Great kill for E-Home in that bot lane before. Slows down God King massively. TP up top by X Nova. They're looking for SRF. If they could find him, I mean, it's going to be tough to catch this bat. Yeah, wave of terror, but there's Dyer's nothing more doing there. Is under attack. Yeah, he's 1k lead overall for uh, Royal Never Give Up. And holding steady, but look at where both the Drow and the Legion are in net worth. Like, it is not looking good by no. any means. I also want to say as well, I'm really surprised the Batriders were going for this blink first, or at least has it queued up, because... You, know, you are playing against press the attack from the Legion, you're playing against Snowball, you're playing against Swap. There's loads of different ways of cancelling that lasso. And I understand they need the gap closed to get on the jar and things. I feel like even if you blink in as the Batrider this game without any other protection, it's so easy to die. Avalanche toss on to X Nova. Magic Missile gets used, but X Nova, ooh, Salve stays alive, but no longer. Bot lane though. Gone, James, and that's a dual victory for the Legion commander. Gawking just TP. Um, did he TP? Yeah, he did. Yeah, okay. So they're going to just try and trade tier ones here by the looks of it. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant are scanning. Radiant's bottom tower is Chalice under attack. going for the blink Dyer's dagger. Top tower is under attack. Yeah, he needs a way of catching the arc. That's the big thing, this game. They are going to have big arc issues if Chalice does attack. not deal with him. I mean, lane. We, were, we were talking about E-Home. Bottom lane, Arena U, Spear comes out. They get the kill on a Chalice. We were talking about how E-Home wanted to be working pretty early. Rider as well. Now SRF, Mortimer's Kisses, and he's in trouble. They'll get that kill on the Bat Rider. XM's doing pretty well on the snap, but other than that, things are lacking for the rest of their cores. Radiance middle tower is under like, attack. Is this early pace still a possibility for E-Home? Mm, not really. I don't think... Like they're fall like you're saying, they're falling behind on their both their side lane cores. S Triple C is level five at nine minutes into the game. Like he's not even close to level six. He's just hit five. Wow. And they're so reliant on XM being the one that makes the plays across the map. Nice shards on for Felix. Spear comes out, fire snap cookie, tag team now. Tension on to Felix Chaba. Avalanche as well as the toss. So he pits on a two. Now and a big turn. problem here for E-Home. Chalice comes in and he's got press the attack. Overwhelming odds is thrown. They'll get the kill there. Setsu takes the life of James. X Nova comes over. He's level five. Still looking to do something, but... Yeah, God King has Maya just coming on the career now, though. Oh, I don't know. This game looks really good for RNG. I think E-Home have missed a big window. Avalanche a toss. Ooh. X Nova throws the magic missile, they hit the spear, and the gods rebuke on X Nova. They look Straight over, cookie. fire snap cookie, lands on it too. Sweep is there by the duel, snowball, and still a victory with a sliver of health. They focus their attention on a super, they just don't have the damage to kill him before the TP out. A couple of big kills there for Ehome. Flux, Spark Wraith, James. Not enjoying this. Yeah, really good fight though for you here, but again, Gokin's just free farming. He's top of the net worth now with this Midas. Going Maelstrom next. Seems like SCC needs like a pretty good mid game to really even bring this back into their favor by quite a bit. But then, 
Like, he's just got treads coming on the courier at 11 minutes into the game, you know? Like, he can stu still do, like, uh, good amounts of damage with, like, multi-shot and with the marksmanship procs and things, but... Do you this just try to fight around him? But, like, this Batrider has blink. Like, Batrider's just going to get on top of the drow and just sit up, like, with Firefly and just park himself on top of him. Boy, jelly for the Radiant team. Does he use on himself? No, he doesn't. Smoke, I really like Snowball, him. they're going for God King. And Mortimer's Kisses with the Walrus Punch. God King, he's going to die oh, again. That is a big kill. Slow down the big man on campus of the Arc Warden, but they've got the swap. X Noble throws the magic missile out onto the Mars. SRF coming over and Blink into the pit. SRF not finding anybody just yet. They look for James, but he's starting to get away and finding some distance between him and the side of RNG. Spear Ooh. avoided with the snowball. James just moving around and styling over on RNG. You think you caught yourself a tusk and then all of a sudden he's just a giant snowball. Yeah, I mean, James is a really good tusk player in general. Though. Like, we saw it last tournament when he was playing on CDEC. Yeah. This guy... It feels like he always, like, makes plays like that just regularly on Tusk, you know? Like, I've seen him get sh throw shards up onto high grounds to get vision, to snowball, to camps, and all sorts. Lasso now on XM after that entire oh. chase. They're still going to find the Snapfire. And that's the one hero on E-Home that you can't let die. Because Snapfire's the only one that's, like, keeping them in the game that you need to get this Axe at a good timing on to make plays. Because Chalice is struggling to find farm, S Triple C is struggling to find farm. XM's the one that has to be controlling the tempo of the game. And I know you talked about Gokking dying again before. I honestly think if Gokking died twice in the next two minutes, it wouldn't make a difference. Because I still think it gets to the point in the game where Ehome are really going to struggle to deal with it. And I don't think they can win the game before that time comes. Not to say we wouldn't love to be proven wrong, but definitely. I mean, what? Let's see. What, what does Dota Buff say? I want to know what Dota Buff says. Fifty nine forty one. Okay. I'm a little surprised. Yeah, I mean, there is still a chance for E Home to win. Like that, that's, it's always going to be there, right? But just the way the game's going already. You know, how many times have we seen these Arc War Warden performances this game where they like this sit, uh, tournament where they get like MKB Daedalus and they just sit on the high ground and defend their towers, and then when the split push starts coming out. Like, where's their split push coming from on Ehome? How are they dealing with this clone just shoving the lanes in constantly? How do they go high ground? There's so many things that the start one is going to make them struggle with. And he's just about got that Maelstrom finished. Meanwhile, Wink Dagger for the Legion Commander is about to be done. SCC, looking for the... Looking for that Dragonlance. Um... It'll be that with... Two Wraith Bands, really not much. And then XM, a thousand gold away from the Ags, not terrible. Yeah, XM's doing okay. And that's true, he has found his way back into the game, but. Lasso again. on the Tusk, can they get the kill on a James? The Spear misses, but he slept up and killed regardless. So satisfying watching God's Rebuke finish somebody off. Yeah, that really does. That and, like Coling Blade are the two like. Finish yeah, items. yeah. So ten eight for RNG. What timing did Felix get his Blink Dagger last game? A super oh. dead to Chalice, another dual win well for this Legion Commander. I think that's the Blink reveal. It was. Yeah. Felix got his Blink at like. Was it 14 and a half, 15 minutes? I can't remember. Let me check. Are is it crazy? Radiant's is it crazy that is under with two deaths this time and more deaths last time, he's getting it at a relatively good timing either way? Oh, he got it at 17 minutes last game. Yeah, it's not that bad. Luigi Commander getting Chalice. well. In some trouble. Press the attack. Flame break from SRF. And still don't get the kill. Mortimer's kisses. Avalanche comes out, Chalice finally falls, Kisses come out onto God King's Tempest double. Walrus Punch, SRF in some trouble, Earthsquitter flies in, SCC ends up dead. Now, XM is in a bad way, but the Fire Snap Cookie, the arena down, they've got the swap. XM now can't hit in to kill off Super, they've got the sweep on a both this Venge as well as the Tusk. They don't even think about going back in with the help of this Arc Warden. 
Spark Wraith fucks Snowball all the way over onto oh, the Mars. They get the kill on a James. They'll take out a third. They lose the Bat Rider, but that's about it. Yeah, and they're slowly falling further and further behind Dyer's this game. Middle tower is under attack. But when this uh, Arc 1 gets BOTs, he's going to really start to pull ahead. Oh, did you see, though, in that fight, like he doesn't even bother using Lasso on the Bat Rider because he knows it's going to get cancelled. So mm -hmm. he just sits on top of the drow with Firefly. And, like, what do they do? He's almost got the four stuff on the Bat Rider as well. Makes sure to um, lock up his ring, his, uh, ring of region <laughs> to make sure it doesn't combine into Tranquil Boots because he wants the boots and the windlass. I can't tell you how many times I've done that on offlaners. Well, you're trying to make, like, four staff and Tranquils. Or, like, hood and Tranquils. Yeah, I'm definitely oh, sorry, yeah. Hood and not Tranquil, sorry. They accidentally combined. Did you just have a casual windlass? Nether sure. That's about right, Ryan. Avalanche toss. X Nova magic missile on the run, but <laughs> blink from SRF and Setsu in unison. Yeah, almost has a Desso as well on the Mars. Like, I, I understand Gawking being really farmed, but Setsu's 8, 1, and 2. Like, he's almost the same net worth as God King. He is unbelievably fat this game. Even that was not a dual win for Charles. Yeah, which is interesting considering he got the last hit. Must have impressed the attack or overwhelming Arena, option. Arena, SCC, clean break. There's the stun, and they've got the last over there. Press pressed the attack. They'll try yeah, to fight out. this out. SCC would love to get a kill here, but they just here can't catch James. anybody yet. James comes through, Snowball, and now they've got the duel toss up into the air, but SCC gets a kill. You not to speak with Happy to get his first. They'd be really sad they missed the Bat Rider there. He, like, he came up to the top of that high ground next to the tier one, like to mm -hmm. the weather tip was, and was about to fly over the cliff, but he saw James. And so James didn't see the Bat Rider. Which would have been the much bigger kill, but they'll take what they can get. At the same time, they are caught and just free farming. Still. Yeah, still. Feels like he hasn't stopped free farming. He's going Orchid. Oh, God King. Why does God King never just go Radiance a normal Middle item build? Is under attack. Ever. Um, Because why? Why do that? Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. But why the need for Orchid this game? Why not just go like BOT's MKB? Because mm. they have a purge on the Legion. Like, I understand it's an okay item, but. Oh god, this oh, snowball. Oh no. It's still hit. Actually, he said to get stunned for a second, but they have the spear, they'll have the toss, the arena is down. The gobble up and the spit out was. Pretty solid, eight on a three. They'll look for a duel. Chalice searching, searching, searching. Finally gets this a duel good, off, and now he's in a bad spot. He'll end up giving away the victor. Winner, winner, chicken dinner for uh, Setsu. Lasso out on the XM. They'll sweep him up. He's in trouble. Swap away, trying to survive, but the chase is on. And they'll toss him up into the air and get the kill into the snap fire. And also find X Nova as a plus one. Avalanche toss. If they kill Drow, I wouldn't be surprised if they just called GG in this spot. I see C in a trouble. Easy kill. We'll get the kill in a Felix Chalba, but the TP is successful. First, you have to earn it. Right, no GG today. Good stuff. And that's the orchid. Yeah, X never tried to snap the lasso Ooh. straight away. Oh, oh, God. James gets Wait, what? Did he just? There was nobody else there, right? That was just, just James. James. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, X never tried to snap the lasso straight away, but good force from SRF. Just pulls him away. Two hundred forty gold there for James. Yeah, easy. On the way to the blink. Give the man a full house for stone while you're at it. Not that God King wants to hold that, but Elder Tain wouldn't mind it. Yeah, 
Yeah, he's got it coming. How much? How much away from the Hurricane Pike? Four hundred gold. Has the four staff will farm this stack? Hurricane Pike Dyer's might even give him a chance to kind of fight attack. back. They brought the net worth down from about six k to four k, so it wasn't the worst fight mm. for E Home despite losing a bunch. Yeah, that SRF death around the bounty room is really unnecessary. I think that's the bit that made Dyer's it the difference, right? Because if, if they that fight stays the same as it was without the SRF death, they'll they'll be really happy on RNG, but. Dyer's structures are fortified. They're trying to glyph down here as well because they really want the tier two. Radiance bottom tower. And SRF manages attack. to stay just enough away so that they can't go on him. Oh, this catapult's still alive. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiance Might be able to get the tier two. Fortified. They have yeah, James waiting on the high ground. Radiance yeah, but look, they lose their top tier two as well at the same time. Gokin just chose one for one. Change his position so he doesn't get touched by that spirit. Oh, so regardless, still gets spotted. So SRF's over. Felix is here. They know where they're at, I believe. Gobble up, spit out on from the Legion. Now they've got the duel. Felix not going in onto that. Great job by Ehome, but SCCC almost dead. He swapped away. Mortimer's kiss is coming through on the tiny. They'll bring over the Arc Warden. They've got the silence out of Chalice. They'll have the arena down around X Nova, but the snowball oh, save. The sweep still hits. Press the attack is there, and look at the region for <laughs> X Nova. Wow, James, man. Impressing every time. Avalanche toss, though, onto Chalice. Not enough damage to get the kill, although the Tempest double does it instead. X Nova's still gonna get caught. He'll swap, try to make this difficult. He'll eventually die. Avalanche Ooh. just hitting on a James, but. Do they ever blink we'll on Tusk? Blink. And, oh. oh my god, James! So in CSGO, oh. there's James time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coin it here. Not that it's mine to coin, but it's James time. Fair enough. You do. I feel like it fits. Because he want just is going off. Oh, she TPs away, though. Okay. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. God, he is playing go, so well. Can they go Roche soon on RNG? Potentially. I really hate this Orchid on God King. I just... I, it's so unnecessary. I... I guess. But... God King trying things out, man. Top I mean, double actives are always going to be okay, but I just feel like if they get raw damage output, they're just stronger. Dyer's has been I guess Orchid does a decent amount. Soon for Chalice. Set two, though. Killing off X Nova. Have a good cry in the afterlife. He is uh, 0, 08 and 10 playing the position four. Or the position six, sorry. I don't know how to count. Mjolnir finished for Arc Warden, and they're in a Roche. X Nova knows nothing except five. Sorry. Do they do this? Yeah, I think. This, yeah. Basically, the only way I think the only way they lose the game is if they give the Roche to the die side and take a really silly Roche fight. James has that blink, so he just gets gobbled up, spit out, and blinks back on the landing. Veil on the Elder Time, by the way. Really good with their lineup. And good with every lineup, like that. Mm -hmm. Smoke picked up the Elder Time. Manta finished for the Drow. BKB for Chalice. I will say, after all that, it just feels like they're starting to maintain. But it still feels like this is a tough game for them to win. Haste. It's, it's very, very tough. Well, you know, we shouldn't, shouldn't pretend it isn't. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. 
Hunting. Onto nothing. They're hunting. They just they just want to find something, right? Like just gaining information off the map Dyer's by throwing somebody across it. <laughs> oh, that's an Aethelens. See you later, Batrider. Right? No Aether Lens for you. Jewel, mid. And they've got the duel onto the Elder Time. Mortimer's Kiss is coming through as well as the Bolt Shot. They'll get the gun to Chalice. They'll take out the Legion, so that's a duel win for Super. James dies as well. Super finally hits the deck. XM trying to fire snap and get him to the high ground, but he's a little bit short. They're trying to TP away, but the Spear is there from Setsu to get the kill on XM. Now looking over at X Nova. Right clicks from the Tempest double as well as SRF coming over. They've got the Spark Wraith down. X Nova should be dead and will fall. Four. For one there, I believe. That yeah, buyback comes out from Elder Titan. Yeah, and then this is just going to be a free rush now for RNG. Oh, I was really hoping for another back and forth game like last game, but again, it feels like there's only going to be one winner here. I really like. I want E Home to do something that like massively shocks me. Yeah. And they are it's... they are trying. Like they're going for these big plays like that spit out top, they go for the dual mid. They understand they have to make something happen now. Because as the game goes on and on, it's gonna get harder and harder. So it's almost like they're pressured to do things when they can't really fight. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Hmm. Well, this is kind of how we thought about it in the in the draft. Like they had a certain amount of time to get it done. They had to be leading from the beginning. Their lanes don't go well, and then they've fallen behind earlier, so that sets back their timer. And where so we originally said 30 minutes, it now feels like that timer is even yeah, but... shorter, and they can, you know, it, it definitely seems like their chances are being choked away. Oh, I think Gobble this is spit out's a little bit short. Think... Snowball comes out, Whoa. they've got the duel over to the side of the field. Chaba, they get the kill to James. Okay. They'll win the duel on Tiny. He buys back immediately. There's the silence onto the drow, though. SCC losing a lot of life. Swap from X Nova. He'll be the scapegoat. Or at least attempt to be the scapegoat. They're still moving. They've got the toss onto the drow. He was looking for the spear for a second. Mm, okay. Yeah, I mean, the problem with toss is it doesn't toss you on the far side of them, right? So you can't spear them back. And he didn't have BKBF cooldown, so just play safe. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. But again, I like that e are trying Gobble to do up, this. spit out. Yeah, they want to go again. They look over at God Aegis King, though. and they get the Aegis. That's not terrible, all things considered. Earth Splitter coming in, but they've got the silence. God's Rebuke misses. SCC turns this. Morris Punch, right clicks. They've got the shards. They have the damage. Can they yes, get a kill on the Mars? Yes, they can. Setsu ends up dead, duels out, but Chalice ends up going down. God King with another kill. That sets who kills big though on the Mars. It's huge. But again, they're taking trades, but they're not great trades on Eho. Okay. Next Nova. And the lasso SCC. He gets that caught. Nice. He's dead. 75 seconds with buyback. They'll lose X Nova. James looks like he's next. Throws shards out, but they really don't mean anything. Triple kill there for God King. That play was really nice. They used the um, Orchid from the Arc Warden onto the Venge, and they went in with the Lasso at the same time. But because the Legion was already dead, like, there's no save available. So. SRF finally gets a safe Lasso off. And they do have the Bloodthorn on the Arc now. It's not just the Orchid. Okay. Fifteen K lead. A lead that doesn't feel like it's gonna be trimmed down anytime soon. Illusion. Hmm. Chalice is looking for something here with a smoke. But I have a feeling you might just about be about to run into four heroes. Yeah, this is problematic, but you you talked about they're forced to make moves. Yeah. I think if one more fight goes badly, I think they're, yeah, they're going to be real on the edge. Because <laughs> I feel like they have one more chance, right? Where Because if they lose the next fight, then RNG go high ground. And then they start losing the, their racks and things. Like, at least one set. Radiant are scanning. Hmm. 
So smoke play doesn't really work out for RNG, but they do play some Dyer's deep vision. Okay, so the R the the RNG, do they go high ground here? I guess you just force rotations back. Because Dyer's if they don't TP, they're gonna lose their buildings. There's no cliff. Yeah, so as soon as everybody comes back. Radiance top tower time to is leave. under attack. Time to leave, but it still feels like a fight that they could take. Yeah, they have the clone just pushing out top lane, so. Does mean they'll probably wait for the next clone before they go in again? Like you can slow siege with the clones if you need to, as well. Mm -hmm. There's a DD bot lane that they uh, bot that they might want to take. Yeah, it looks like Sessi's gonna go and grab that one. They're just moving S5 right now. Singular yeah. unit. Don't give Ehome any pickoff potential with the Legion and the Cusp. Make sure you're hugging each other tight. It's not very socially distanced. Uh, definitely not. You know, but... I think they all tested negative, so they're okay. Ooh, those crits from Dyer's Setsu were... Bottom tower is under attack. Okay. Dyer's tower's bottom gone. Tower has fallen. So they get that tower for free. And again, that, that lead just continuing to extend. And they're just staying across the river. They're staying in the triangle. They're continuing to push out. There's no reason for them to really back off too far unless Roche were to be back up. But there's still some time until Roche does come back up. They can continue to keep themselves forward. And if Ehom get caught, they get caught. But RNG don't need to force that fight. They could just wait for Roche. They got to smoke up. Me home. Oh, I think they did. They just see the spark wraith. Oh, potentially on RNG. They haven't moved. They gotta drop the ward on the high grounds. But now RNG know they're there. They want to play around their own vision. So. And here comes a potential fight. Gobble up, spit out. That comes through. BKB pop by Setsu as well as the arena oh down on a multiple heroes. Goes after SCC. Here with the press of the attack. They've got the swap. But the swap brings XM into the fight. They get the kill into James. They'll swap out SCC with the bolts shot coming through. But Felix Chabot looking for the kill. Moves over, steps in, but the silence is out. The Batrider taking a lot of damage. They get the kill on to SRF. Tossed up into the air. Ends up dead. SCC dead for 83 with no buyback. Chalice on the run now. God King makes an appearance and God King starts to rip away at the seams here of Ehome. Yeah, I don't know where God King would for most of that fight. I felt like he was just, you know, chilling in the back line, not really, you know, hitting anybody, but. Up to the high ground they go. Gobble up. Gobble up, spit out. Walrus punch. The damage with the Mortimer's uh, kisses. Alright. Now they go after okay. Super, the shards are perfect. They'll get themselves a kill onto the Elder Titan. Ehome put this A to B together to get themselves a God King kill, and they're looking for Felix. Chalice blinks forward, hit by the Avalanche, blink away. Yeah, Joe. Trying to get the duel off James, if he could just get Vision. And the shards, and the duel just on the end of the TP. Full team white for Ehome. Okay, so... I was wondering how the Mars died so quickly in that fight. And then I looked at him and he's bought an axe, which is obviously really good damage output, but it's got all it. physical damage on the Dyer side, right? So it's really good aggressively, but you have no defensive capability. So if they do catch you like that, with there's just four heroes in the arena with you, but you do still die. Like he's going to build towards this AC now, but I, know, I feel like if he had the axe instead of the AC in that last fight, sorry, the AC instead of the axe last fight, He'd have been so much more difficult to kill. Because the marksmanship uh, goes through all your base armor, right? Mm -hmm. So that AC goes up in value massively. 
Good uh, swap, double swap by Xnova as well. The first one, like, getting him out of the arena. The second one, cancelling the lasso. Really well plays. So, they do cut 5k into that lead. Wow. But I think RNG have so much room to mess up this game. Mm -hmm. Because of, like, how their lineup works. And we've talked about how E-Home, if they want to win, they have to go high ground at some point. Maybe they can get this next Roche, but they would need a pick off to do so. And I just don't know if I see that happening. Snapfire going MKB, then Lincolns. 22 there. They're. Around Roche, it's up in five. They take it pretty quickly. But here comes RNG. Yeah, they need to be really careful on me home. Do they have buybacks on their course? Not on Snapfire yet. Tusk is on cooldown. <laughs> Wait. God King thinking about TPing out that Tempest though. Oh dude, this is their way back into the game. The um the MKB Minitar. Snapfire. Yeah. Here we go. I'm ready. Little Shredder uses your attack damage plus the three times Little Shredder multi shot. Hell yeah. With was Shaco dropped. And SCC will TP back towards mid, clean up these creeps. But he TP's back. They spot that. Roche now available. Question is, do they want to just jump in? Ehome are still right here for the most part, and Drow is pushing off. Did they, did they see it? Was it on the Crete wave? Yeah. Right, okay. BKB next for Drow. I'd be shocked if Ehome win this next fight. But I'd be happy. They won the last shocked. one. Yeah. They did win the last one. It's got to be perfect. I mean, they still lost round. They still won that fight. That was pretty intense. But I was shocked when how, they won the last fight. I mean, considering how much RNG are up, you know, it doesn't necessarily feel like it, does it? No. Dyer's bottom barracks has fallen. But you lose your range racks. They'll force you back. They force back yeah. the drow. And now RNG step forward. That's the thing. When got you the see, BKB, but you know when you Dyer's when you're playing against this Arc Warden, you just shove the lane in so easily with the clone Dan bot. It forces rotations. You just gain so much information and split push off the map. Bloodthorn. They're going for it. Roche spark rates around the pit. Timeless relic picked up by Axem. I guess the way in would be a gobble up spit out to try and grab this Aegis. Double so coming around the side. Roche getting low. No gobble just yet. Firefly activated. Wave of Terror comes in. And now the Spark Wraith hits. BKB popped by the Legion. Jumps in. And snatched by Setsu. Chalice got the kill on the Roche. They look over as the last one's oh, on the XM. XM. He ends up dead. They'll take away Chalice's life. They both have buyback. Now Ehome, I think they just need to leave. Or at least try to leave. James is somehow alive again still. Wave of Terror comes in and four staff back magic missile, multi shot. That'll stop Setsu's blink. They escape defeat for now. Yeah, but they get the Aegis. Uh, who got the cheese? Mars has it still. Okay. So Chalice that went in, couldn't quite manage it though. Good attempt. Had to go on a Roche. He did, yeah. This is going to be at least one high ground. I think you're going to have to buy back here on Ehome, surely. Otherwise, you're just going to lose all your buildings. In these 30 seconds, you're going to lose at least two sets of racks, probably three. Oh, they have repair kit, though. Okay. OS frog kit. <laughs> Blink toss. Oh, wow. Catching a CC. Pops the Minotaur horn. That forces a swap from X Nova. Setsu's getting pretty low. He has Aegis though. 
Silence, lasso, SCC, he's dead. No buyback, these buybacks are gonna be late. Well, the buyback only happens from the Venge. The other two heroes spawn naturally. He doesn't have a goal for buyback, nowhere even close. Chalice looking like he might just die again. The gobble up the spit out is pretty nice, but you've lost Chalice. He's now got buyback, but he won't even use it. They'll just call GG. Oh, dear. A good game by uh, RNG, but Ehome will be really disappointed with their laning stage, I think, in particular. Yeah. That was the thing that really let them down. I agree. But, um, yeah. I mean, I, it's really difficult to say anything about this game because we talked, I think we exhausted it almost, you know, throughout the game that inevitably this Ark Warden is just going to outfarm everybody and get to a point, you know, where he, he just outscales everyone. Like, yeah. I don't agree with his lighting build, but honestly, you know, with how far 